So my robot's now got a head, it's got a body, it's got a neck connecting the head and the body together. Um, I'm going to start thinking about some arms on this, on this figure. And I'm going to show you another third way of making a selection on an object or, or an image and uh, taking that section and putting it onto a new image. Previously we'd used the lasso tools. We used the polygonal lasso tool and we used first of all the magnetic lasso tool when we had a very clear edge. The magnetic lasso tool is not going to work on this because I've got, I want to just have part of this crank and where I get to sections like here and around this part here there's not a very clear edge for the magnetic lasso tool to stick to. I could use the polygonal lasso tool but I've got some quite distinct curves here and because the polygonal lasso tool only does straight lines that can be difficult, not impossible because we can do lots of little little steps but to get a nice smooth curve not really possible with the, with the polygonal lasso tool. So this time I'm going to use this pen tool here and I'm going to draw, effectively draw an outline around this object. So pen tool, here we go. And settings here I've got for my pen tool up here. I'm drawing paths. That's pen tool. Okay, so those, those are the settings I need. I'm going to just zoom in here a little bit more. Okay, so there I can see a bit, bit closer. I'm going to start on a straight line. So in this instance it's just like the magnetic lasso tool where it's joined the dots. Now at this point here it starts to curve gently up here. So when I, I'm going to hold my mouse button down and drag out and I start to see these little handles. That means I'm starting to draw a curve. This does take a bit of getting used to. So a bit of experimenting and the curve starts to increase here. I'm not doing this quite as carefully as I as I ought to. And not perhaps that not quite as accurate as it might be, but you get the idea. So it's starting to produce a curve. Can you see the curve coming around there? There are some good tutorials online that you might find on YouTube or something which would show you about using the pen tool in more detail. And I'm perhaps not concentrating quite as much because I'm talking at the same time. Never a good thing. So it's starting to curve around. This back end of the, the crank. Back onto a straight line here, I think. Back to the beginning, and now you can see a line around there. Now that's what's called a path. Now if I come to my layers option here, so I've got layers, channels and paths. If I click on paths now, you can see the work path which I've just drawn. It's called a work path. Now what I want to do is to make that work path into a selection. So I come down here and I choose here, load path as a selection. Click on there. Let's just zoom in there so you can see that closer. And now you can see that this has become a selection. Back onto layers. Again, do the copy. Command and C. Onto my new image. Command and V. And I've got that pasted as a new layer. Let's pop it up the top so I can see it. And that's going to be the basis for my arms. Right, so let's close there now. Don't save that one. I've got my arm part. Now I'm going to call this upper arm and I'm going to call it left, upper arm left because that's going to be the upper arm on the left hand side strangely enough and I'm going to just flip it around and resize it I'm going to resize it quite a bit actually that's going to be my upper arm and I'm going to attach it around about there and let's just rotate it up here a bit more so it looks like he's waving maybe. So the idea, now why I've called it upper arm is the fact that actually, you know, if we think about our own arms, 
they're made up of not just one bit, but they're actually two set two 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 sections. You've got your upper arm, you've got your elbow, you've got your lower arm, and then if you think about your hands, you've got your wrist, and you've got your hand, and you've got individual fingers on the hands. And each of the, each of the individual fingers are made up of three different bones. And it's that kind of detail that you really want to start to get into your robot to make it look believable as something which would kind of work as a um, as a mechanical figure. So that's just going to be my upper arm on the left hand side. Okay, so let's click yes to apply the the um, the resizing, the transformation. So what I want to have is to have now a lower arm. So I need to make a copy of this, this layer. So what I can do is I can select it with my move tool, hold the Alt key on my keyboard and drag. And I made a copy of that. So that now is the upper arm left copy. So now I'm going to call that, take that off, call it lower arm left. Okay, so it's the lower part of the arm. And let's, I've currently got this on snap so I'm going to go view and take the snap off okay there we go that's better and I'm lining that up so it looks as if that's now hinged joined there okay let's zoom in there so we can see that a bit more clearly yeah so I've got an upper arm and a lower arm okay Let's say I want to have, obviously, another arm on the right hand side. So I take my arm layers and let's just select them both. So I'm holding the shift key to select them, the two of them. And I again, alt key, drag across, and I've got another two layers. Now you can see my image is starting to have quite a number of layers. And I'm going to have to rename each of these now. Because that is now lower arm. Oops, let's get this one, just do this. There we go. Lower arm right. That's now upper arm, upper arm right. I think that's right. Okay. And I want to flip those around, so let's just do that. There we go. Okay, so I've got my, my, two, my two arm, right and left arms. I'm very quickly going to start, because this is our, I've only just begun my robot, I'm going to have lots and lots of layers here. So what I'm going to show you is how you can start to make more sense of, um, of organising your layers and actually makes it an awful lot easier to, to copy, uh, copy sections. So let's take the left arm. So the two layers that are in the left arm. I'm going to now make what's called a layer group. It's so like a little folder of layers. So I'm going to drag those two layers onto here, which is the little folder icon. And that puts them both into a group. I'm not going to call that left arm. I'm going to call that left arm top. And I'll explain why I'm calling it left arm top in a second. Left arm top. Let's do the same thing with these two. They're going to be in the right arm. So now I've got a group for each of my arms. In the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add more arms and add a bit more detail to those arms to again make them a bit more believable. Uh, and that will show you why it's important to, why it's very useful to have a layer group with all the sections in, because it's going to make it an awful lot easier to duplicate them.